what happens as a technician when you roll up to the job site and you have a frozen evaporator coil? I have it into four main categories. And we'll, we, we can break these down, but number one is going to be airflow. Airflow, 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 airflow. Uh, number two being temperature, either the indoor temperature set too low, so our saturated temperature gets too low, or the outdoor temperature gets too low, low ambient conditions. So number one, airflow. Number two, temperature. Number three, we got uh, restrictions. So that could be filter dryers, TXD. Some, something is keeping the refrigerant from flowing through the evaporator coil. So it's a refrigerant restriction issue. Uh, and then number four, I put in there, it's uh, would be low on charge. There's not enough refrigerant in there. So refrigerant drops or pressure drops. But that one is the one that everybody goes to first. And it should really be the last. So if that's happening, it takes time for that to happen. And it's usually combined with some other issue. So I put it in those four categories. And then the one that's kind of an outlier is a, a stuck contactor, but I still consider that with airflow. That means your contactor stuck, your outdoor unit's running, and there's no airflow across the inside. So even though it's kind of an outliner, I still put it with uh, the category number one being airflow. Yeah, you did bring up that, that the fourth one, which is you got to be able to uh, measure the refrigerant charge when you have an adequate heat load across the indoor coil and you're not like very low temperature outside. So it's got to be running during normal operating conditions. And so, yeah, that will be a fourth one for sure. So really you want to be measuring the refrigerant charge when it's like 70, like this is just like generalities, right? But it can go even further than this, but a 70 degree indoor dry bulb temperature and higher and a 70 degree outdoor dry bulb temperature and higher. Of course, there's many other factors than that. And of course, you could measure uh, the refrigerant charge at a, a lower temperature on the inside of the building. It has to do with your wet bulb temperature and the actual heat load across that coil. Uh, but these are just general terms in which we speak. Uh, so one thing I wanted to point out is uh, if you have a frozen evaporator coil, we often think, hey, we're going to need to melt that right away. And we are going to have to try to have that melted before we really fully diagnose the system. But one thing that you can do is while that system is still running, and you don't have basically any airflow going across the indoor coil, you can measure subcoiling. So if you have no subcoiling on that system uh, at that time, then you know that you are low in refrigerant. So think about if you uh, basically have nothing or you do have maybe, maybe 10, 12, 13 degrees of subcoiling and you measure a frozen evaporator coil, then maybe, hey, maybe I have another problem. Maybe it's, maybe it's low airflow or something like that. So that's something that you can quickly check to kind of determine if you are significantly low in refrigerant, if you have no subcoiling at all, 